Okay, here we are. We've got all of our stuff on the table and the larger things on the floor there. So let's, let's start building. Um, the first thing in, that, that we need to do is attach the um, accessory tray, uh, which is also a leg spreader uh, or a, a brace uh, onto the tripod. So let's do that. We don't actually put this on tight until we, uh, until we put on the, the scope head. Probably all right to go. Okay, the next thing that we do is the, uh, the holster for the, uh, for, for the hand controller, and it goes in like this. I don't know, I don't know if you can see it, but it's gonna make a big bang here. There we go. The second part goes in there, and eventually the hand controller will just sit in, in there quite nicely. The next thing we have to do is, uh, is install these, these azimuth screws onto the mount head. <clears throat> That's gonna be on the ground here, so you, you, you may not see the, the, uh, uh, what's, what's going on. However, here's the head, and they go in here. Now, the mount head goes on top of the, uh, the tripod, and you'll notice that there's a, uh, where, where these azimuth bolts go, uh, go together, that matches up with a little peg here. Now, we're in the southern hemisphere, which means that peg has to point to the south. Uh, I've noticed that the, uh, he said with a bit of a smirk, that the, the, Celestron, uh, the Celestron people have uh, neglected to notice that, uh, that there is a southern hemisphere. Um, so they, they, they say it's very important that you have these things pointing to the north. If you're in, an, in the southern hemisphere, read south. So that goes on like that. And there we go. These notice there's a lot of there's a lot of play there because we haven't tightened up these bolts yet. However, let's get the the, the proper bolt in. There we go. Let's brace that up. Okay. Now, normally you wouldn't, uh, you, you'd, you'd extend the legs a fraction. Um, it's my, my advice that you don't extend the legs fully because the, 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 the taller it is, the less stable it is. So I like my telescope nice and, nice and low. Obviously, it's gonna depend on the levelness of the ground. Right, the next thing to do is install the, uh, the counterweight bar and it's got its own little not locking nut, which is uh, in there. Now, that goes, let's just move that down. That goes in here, in you go. Now, probably the most important part of this entire rig is the little guy on the end here. Because, I don't know about you, but I don't like the idea of having one of, those, one of these counterweights slipping off the end and hitting me on the foot. That would hurt. Lock that up. Okay. Uh, and now a counterweight. Now, the eight inch version of this bundle does only, only needs one counterweight. And there are Specific ways to put this, uh, this on, which I haven't figured out yet, but um, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see. I'm gonna have to move over here. There's your foot, uh, your, your, your foot saver. Now, we've got the counterweight on the, the equatorial mount now. It's important now that you do not try to use the motors to slew the mount around uh, uh, when it's unbalanced like this because you're gonna strain the motors. So um, just bear that in mind. Okay, the next thing to do is to at attach this little guy. Now this is a declination motor cable and it goes from the declination motor port here, that one, that one there, around to, there's another one just there. There we go. That allows the, um, uh, the, 
the, the, the motor to get juice no matter where, uh, where the head is pointed. And then the next one after that is the next uh, plus hand controller. And that's a nifty little thing by Celestron. And just put that in there. We, could, we might move that. We, depends on the ergonomics of it. You might move that to a different leg, of course. Um, hand controller, like that. And finally, a, a power cable. This is quite a long cable. I'm not going to bother undoing it. Um, one thing that Celestron has done, which is very nice, it's a standard um, 12 volt or 13.8 volt uh, center positive pin, but it's got a nice little collar there which, which prevents it from falling out because uh, when it falls out in the middle of a photographic run, it's a pain. Okay. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is, is attach the OTA. Now, this is the star of the show. Now, this, this, uh, this uh, OTA has the wide style saddle, or the, the well, wide style bar, which goes to... Now, the uh, Celestron Advanced VX has a... Uh, the, the more modern ones, at least, has, have a dual-sized uh, plate on them, a saddle on them, so th that means that you can take either side. Uh, either size. This one's a larger size. We had to change the the, the orientation of this around. We, you, you, you take these mounting bolts out and you move them to the other side for the for the for the wide saddle. In you go. I think we're getting it the right way up. There we go. Tighten that down. Just put it in any old place. I'll I'll balance it shortly. Now these these little bolts here are very important. I'll just go in there. Just in case the, uh, the, the clamp bolts on the saddle let go for, 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 for any reason, that will save you from having to pick your scope up off the ground. So, now, unlock the, uh, one of these clutches, and now you notice it's out of balance. So we need to, we need to run it slightly further forward. That's close-ish. By the way, the uh, the clutch is this guy here. So that you, you can lock it up and it's quite stable. And you unlock it. Where is it? And it moves quite nicely. Now we balance on the other on the other axis. It's uh, not far, not far. Possibly a little bit scope heavy, I think. You know what? I like it slightly scope heavy, just in case we have a disaster. If it, uh, it's, uh, not scope heavy, uh, slightly, uh, slightly heavy to the uh, counterweight because it tends to not crash to the ground. It'll be fine like it is. Okay, so there's the OTA. Okay, now it's time to put some stuff onto the OTA. So we've got, let's see what I'm going to start with. I'll start with a star diagonal. The Celestron star diagonal is uh, quite a useful th little little thing. What we've got is the back of all of these all of these Schmidt Cassegrains is called a visual back. I don't know why they call it that, but uh, that's its name, and it's the basis point for everything to get mounted to. So, the visual back, the star diagonal just goes straight into the visual back like that. Tightens up. Okay, and there's one eyepiece that comes with the Celestron 8-inch Cassegrain, which is a very nice plessel. It's a 25, I believe. Yes, it's a 25. There we go. Roll that cup up. Yeah. And that goes into there. The thing I like about Celestron... I'll show you this. The thing I like about the Celestron um, eyepieces is it has, it has this undercut there, which will uh, save you if, it, uh, if, if the telescope slews so that it turns upside down and it, does, uh, and it wants to drop on the ground. There we go. I'll take the, uh, take the lid off. Just have a quick look through to see if there's... Oh, yep. I can see some light through there. 
Now, the, the next thing that, that goes onto the OTA is the finder scope. The, the finder scope is a tricky little thing to use, but they are dead useful. It goes in from the back there, making sure that the, this, this, this ring is in, the, in about the right place, which it looks like about. Now, there's, there's a, uh, a rubber ring there which rolls up and down. Now, that rubber ring goes into, uh, in behind that one, and the, this little undercut area here gets uh, adjusted by these three thumb screws, which I'll just pull out slightly. That goes in there, and then you can put it in like that. Obviously, it needs to be aimed correctly, but, um, but once, you, once you do that, it's probably the most useful thing you'll find. Okay, um, I think it's all in, in, uh, in, in place now. I'll just show you the, the locks. Now, when you're doing this, never let go of the telescope because if it falls, it's going to damage itself. Um, but the, the clutch uh, for, for, for this axis is there, so you can just lock it up like that and it's quite stable and you can, you can move it by unlocking it. Similarly, I think that camera can get it. Um, this, I'll just lock that one up. This guy moves that axis there. Right. 